Hi, I'm Dean DeMarzo, and this is a review of the Neewer NW700 condenser microphone and desktop boom stand. This is currently one of the top selling mics on Amazon, uh, so I thought I'd take a chance to share my thoughts as a video and music producer, and see how it stacks up against some more professional microphones. So outside of producing YouTube videos and music, uh, I'm also a full-time private teacher. I teach guitar, bass, drums, uh, along with uh, studio recording and producing. And one of the things I hear from my students, along with YouTube commenters on my videos, is how can I get into recording music and producing music uh, the cheapest way possible? Which is a great question because music production can be one of the most expensive hobbies out there. Uh, between microphones, interfaces, MIDI controllers, monitors, uh, you know, the computer itself, it all adds up really quickly. And there's a lot of very affordable audio equipment out there, especially on Amazon. Uh, a lot of it's pretty good, some of it isn't great. So I wanted to take the time to look at this particular microphone, which is, like I said, one of the top selling mics on Amazon right now, uh, and see how it stacks up against uh, the gear I'm used to using every day here in the studio. Before we get into the review, I wanted to do a quick unboxing video just to show you what you get with this microphone. Uh, the first thing you'll see is the owner's manual here, which shows you how to assemble the desk clamp, which is nice. Uh, it can be a little tricky. Also comes with a really nice pop filter. Uh, I mean, this is comparable to the pop filter I've been using as my main one in the studio for years. Uh, so it'll be really nice to have a second one. Uh, it's very solid quality. This is the shock mount, which will hold the microphone. Uh, this shields it from sound from any bumps on the mic stand or uh, rumble from passing cars, anything like that. Uh, this is really nice to have for condenser microphones, which can get kind of noisy. Here is the microphone itself. It is a side address uh, cardioid condenser microphone. Pretty standard XOR port on the bottom. This is an interesting cable they've included. It's a female XLR to 3.5 millimeter uh, TRS jack. And I'll explain how that works later. We're probably not going to use that much. This is the clamp portion of the uh, desktop boom stand. Uh, this clamps right onto the desk. And uh, you'll see the rest of the arm fits into that hole on the top later. Here is the boom arm itself you can see expands and contracts. Uh, here's the windscreen, which uh, is useful if you're using it outside or anything. Uh, I usually don't use a windscreen if I already have a pop filter in front of there, so I probably won't use that. Also has a sheet with the specs for this microphone, the frequency uh, response and the, uh, the directional response you'll see in the bottom right there. So this is the microphone itself right here. Uh, I've actually been using it to record my voice in this whole video so far. It's been just off screen over there. And as you can hear, it sounds pretty solid. Uh, I mean, especially for, I think I got it for about 30 bucks. You know, the price goes up and down on Amazon, but that's about the price point for this thing. Right now I've got it just mounted on a standard boom stand, uh, but I will show you how the desktop stand works in just a moment. Uh, it takes a little bit of time to assemble, but it's pretty convenient if you want to just have, uh, you know, a microphone ready to go, which I, I think I am going to use it in my live streams from now on. We'll see if I can find a comfortable place on my desk for it. Uh, but yeah, it seems pretty convenient. So to assemble the desktop stand, you're going to start by uh, placing the clamp on the desk and tightening it on. Uh, so that that main hole faces upwards because that is where the main boom arm will be inserted as you can see here. Once the boom arm is ready to go, you'll see this uh, tiny little piece at the end of the boom arm. That's where the microphone is actually going to screw onto. You're going to need this microphone adapter, which is included. I like to place this onto the boom arm first, as I'm showing here. Uh, I even pull this piece out so I can really get a handle on it and then screw that piece into the shock mount rather than trying to twist the shock mount around on top of the boom arm. I find this a lot easier, safer for the microphone if you've already put the microphone in there, as I have. And then you can just insert that back into the stand and tighten this knob. Now, if you haven't placed the microphone into the shock mount itself, you're gonna to wanna to do that at this point. Uh, you're gonna squeeze these two clamps in the front opening up the space inside to insert the microphone, and you're going to want to make sure that the Neewer logo is facing you. 
Uh, so one thing to note about this microphone, it is a condenser microphone, uh, which if you're not familiar with the different types of microphones, dynamic, condenser, ribbon, and so on, uh, condenser microphones are special in that they require what's called phantom power, which is an extra 48 volts of electricity that actually powers the microphone, uh, as opposed to dynamic mics, which you can just plug into anything and go. Uh, condensers require a little extra power. Now this is supplied by just about every audio interface on the market. Right now I've got it plugged into a Scarlett 2i2 by Focusrite. Uh, but like I said, any audio interface uh, that you can get right now will supply that. If you're not plugging into an audio face, if you're plugging directly into your computer's sound card or into a camera, uh, this microphone will not put out any sound unless you first run it through a phantom power supply. Uh, which I'll provide some links to that down below. Uh, and what that does is it just provides the 48 volts that your interface would have provided uh, and then passes the audio through to whatever you're plugging it into, your computer, your camera, and so on. So just like any condenser mic, this mic is pretty versatile. Uh, it's great for vocals, speaking voice like I'm using it for now. Uh, you could put this on an acoustic guitar, strings, horns. Uh, it's useful in just about any application in the studio. You wouldn't necessarily want to use this live, uh, as condenser mics can be pretty prone to feedback. Uh, they are great for overhead drums as well. Uh, you'll notice I'm using two overhead condenser microphones by Audio-Technica in all of my cover videos, uh, so they're great for that as well. Here are a few examples of this microphone being used in some of those applications. Well, I'm testing out the microphone Trying all its frequencies I think it sounds pretty good But don't take my word for it Just listen to this song So as you can hear, it's pretty versatile. It fits all these sound sources really well. Uh, I mean, the drum recording isn't gonna be perfect because you would traditionally use a multiple microphone setup, but for using one mic, it's not too bad. Uh, my only complaints with this microphone so far seems to be a little bit more sensitive to volume uh, compared with some of my professional mics, uh, which I'm gonna do a full shootout between this and a, uh, a few professional mics I have in another video, so stay tuned for that. Uh, so, like I said, it tends to clip a little bit sooner than some of those other mics when at the same gain level. Uh, so maybe you throw a pad in front of this or you set your gain a little bit lower for this mic. Uh, I've also noticed the noise floor is just a little bit higher uh, than some of the more professional mics I've used, which is not a surprise given you know that this thing is being manufactured for such a low price. Uh, so keep that in mind when you're recording. If you're recording in a really quiet environment, you're recording very sparse instrumentation, that noise floor might be a little more audible than say if you were using this for rock vocals in a big rock production or something. You can get away with a lot more there. That said, this mic is a fantastic value for the cost, uh, especially with the included boom arm, which, like I said, just feels really solid, uh, you know, even compared to some of the more expensive boom arms I've tried out, like the onstage model and other ones like that. In short, if you're looking for a microphone in the under $50 range and want to get a nice, uh, you know, desktop boom stand in the process, this is your best bet on Amazon right now. If you're looking for something a little bit higher end than this and you want to step up into the $100 range for microphones, I can personally recommend uh, Audio-Technica and MXL, in particular Audio-Technica's AT2020. Uh, I think it's $99 right now at most retailers. And that was my first condenser microphone. You'll even see it in a few of my first YouTube videos. Uh, it served me very well until I you know, got the budget to start buying pro-level microphones, so I can personally recommend that one. Uh, under that budget level though, this thing's fantastic. So like I said, I've also done a quick shootout between this microphone and the AKG C414, which is a thousand dollar professional vocal mic. Uh, so you can really hear the differences, uh, you know, and what you can expect from a professional mic compared to a budget microphone from this one, and just how well this one holds up. 
Alright, thanks for watching guys. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more product reviews like this one, along with all kinds of other cool stuff, cover songs and lessons. Uh, if you have any questions about this microphone, the desktop boom arm, or there's any other products you'd have questions about or like to see a review of, be sure to leave those down in the comments below, and I will cover those soon. Thanks for watching.